It looks a little icy. If you're looking to buy an electric unicycle in Europe, head to myewheel.com. They are a trusted dealer serving all of Europe with reasonable prices, two-year warranties, and reliable after-sale service. Click the link below to get 5% off your myewheel.com purchase when you use the promo code EVX. What's going on guys? I'm here with Duff in Florida. I think we're going to ride something like a swamp, maybe, or close to it, buy it maybe. But today we're going to talk about some safety. Uh, and gearing up, padding up, especially in times like these, you got to make sure you don't uh, land yourself in the hospital. topic is very important because a lot of people who maybe don't live in New York City like me probably don't feel like they need to gear up that much they feel like they and they might have ridden hundreds or thousands of miles with almost no gear and been like there's been no issue gives you a false sense of safety yeah I mean these things are a lot of fun but there's something very important to be said about even just I said in my other videos there's just some basics you should wear mm -hmm. um, so for me when I go out I wear a full face helmet and uh, wrist pads to protect myself because you never know what can happen. But what's like the most naked you get when you ride? Uh, I would say normally that the most naked I'll be is a helmet and wrist guards like you. But usually I'm wearing what I'm wearing today, you know, elbow, wrist, knee. Uh, full face of them on the open road. If I'm doing back stuff like this, usually I'll have on just a, a skater helmet. But yeah, you, you got to be prepared because prepared you really never know when it's going to come. Yeah, what's the backstory behind that crazy crash? Well, here's what it is. So it was Christmas time and a bunch of the guys were gonna go out and do a Christmas ride. I think we do this every year, wear a bunch of lights on you. I, I bought like a $10, you know, LED light thing to string around me and I was pumped, I was ready to go. I was getting in the spirit, you know, it was Christmas time. But then it started to like sleet and snow a little bit and Everyone wasn't sure if they were going to do the ride or not, but I was like, you know what, no matter what, I'll just ride over there and hang out with the, with the guys at uh, HQ and it'll be a good time. Uh, <laughs> so I jumped out of the Navy Yard, jumped on the Manhattan Bridge, and you know, not 10 seconds in, you saw the crash that we saw at the beginning of this video. I'm going 15, 20 miles an hour, kind of taking it easy on the bridge because it's pretty icy. So this guy on a bike is following another cyclist. And he, you know, on that bridge, it's, there's nothing between you. It's just like two lanes of traffic going side by side, you know, opposite directions. But he's in a bike following behind another cyclist. And for whatever reason, I don't know what his rush was. He was almost off the bridge, you know, so close. He basically uh, decided to peek out so he could overtake that guy uh, to get in front of him, but didn't realize that there might be oncoming traffic for some reason. I mean, I'm sure he's ridden that route before, but for whatever reason, when he peeked out, he saw me, didn't expect me there, and then freaked and tried to, you know, go back in and make a sharp turn. And that's what made him slide out, and his whole bike covered the entire bike path. So he slid out completely right into me. I had no choice but to think on my feet. I mean, like quite literally, I had to think on my feet. And I just jumped up in the air and reached for the, uh, for the fence. I didn't quite make it, as you saw. That's kind of explains why I kind of spun around completely. Is, I, I had no choice. There was no way I was bunny hopping that thing. I don't have power pads on there. The ice saved me. My jacket had no scratches. 
If you want to wreck, wreck when it's wet or icy and you won't wreck your clothing. Uh, but try not to wreck. But yeah, so I just slid out and then uh, my helmet saved me. My knee and shin guard saved me. The ice saved me. Like, if I hadn't had that gear on, who knows how that would have went. But um, there's a mark on my helmet now, which will forever be there. I checked the helmet afterwards and it was fine. I don't need to get a new one. Uh, plus, when I looked, I actually was considering just getting a new one just because they say to do that. They were all sold out, so I couldn't. So, But the moral of the story is gear up for the unexpected because you never know when you're going to crash. Could be low speed, high speed. Always gear up, guys. All right, let's get back to it. Riding here is really fun and different for me. There's a lot of different terrain that people around North America and Europe um, are riding in. Some people are doing trails somewhat like this. Some people are doing mountains and things like that, more rockier. Mm -hmm. we, we ran into like quicksand. I, I don't know if it's quicksand, but it felt like it. <laughs> sugar sand, very, very soft and deep sugar sand. Yep. But let's say you weren't wearing any gear. What's one of the first injuries you might encounter? Uh, well, probably your wrist. So actually, when I when I started to learn EUCs, I didn't wear any gear because I, I was stupid. And the first uh, one of the first things I did was I earned, I fell down, wrist hit the ground, and uh, it, it was injured for two months. You know, I, I also fell, hit my hip. Uh, it's, you know, you, you can you can really hurt yourself even if people think, okay, I'm only doing 20 miles an hour. I don't really, I, how bad can, can I get hurt at 20 miles an hour? The answer is very badly. We had a, a friend of ours in Boston, or he's around Boston, recently who he fell pretty hard at relatively medium pace speed, I guess. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't wearing anything and he messed up his face badly. Mm -hmm. Just protect your face. So get a good uh, full face helmet if you can afford to. As soon oh, yeah. as you, I would say make it a priority if you can to try to afford that. I know a lot of guys are like, oh, I spent $2,000 on a wheel and it's like a lot of extra, but it's like... You get a decent help. I think mine was low hundreds. Mine wasn't that much. Same with mine. I think mine's like 116, yeah. but uh, definitely a full face is what I would always recommend. But again, I get it. If you got a skate helmet, use that at the very least. No, absolutely. And it's really, I mean, wearing gear is, is you know a lot of people say I just don't like the way it feels or, or whatever but it's like anything else if, if you do it enough it becomes habitual you don't even think about it you just you shouldn't be scared of VUCs like you're gonna fall at some point probably less likely when you're just starting out because you're not pushing it but it's something to be afraid of if you gear up like after your first fall you'll be like oh falling wasn't that bad Skid marks of the gators as they've gone through here. Right down the middle. I wanted to dive into really quick what gear that I wear and maybe you can take some uh, and apply it to your life. So obviously first off I have this helmet. I'm going to take it off. Ooh. All right. This is a Liat helmet. Uh, I think it's called like the DBX 3.0 or something like that or 4.0. Uh, they have variations of this out now. I think this one's out of stock for some reason. Um, but anything by these guys I pretty much recommend for their, for their mountain biking helmets. Um, you can kind of see here, this is like from my crash, that little scrap right there. Um, but basically, the benefit to this helmet is inside they have this what they call 360 technology, which is kind of like their version of MIPS. Um, and why I love this with the, uh, 
goggles instead of my old TSG helmet is with this, whether it's hot weather or super cold weather, I can keep my eyes protected when I'm going fast um, and protected from bugs or whatever else. And it's not gonna have any fogging because there's, my nose is not inside of it. So that's why I personally prefer uh, this kind of goggle versus helmet setup. My custom gloves, um, these are just gloves called EVS, which I think I bought on Revzilla for like 40 bucks or something. And then I very crudely um, took the uh, <laughs> wrist guards and I just grommeted that to these nice motorcycle gloves. The benefit to this whole setup really is um, it gives me a lot of padding on my whole hand, top, bottom, fingers, all that jazz. Um, it's, but it's got this back piece here that's made so you don't hyper extend. Um, but the strength is also in how tight you put this piece here. Keeping that tight will also make sure that when you hit, you'll glide. And obviously the plastic is what I'm all about. The plastic is going to make you just slide on the cement when you fall. So this is the key to success with all the wrist guards, is having a good large piece of plastic that you can slide on. And if you don't um, prefer something a full finger like that, uh, this is what I used to use for years. This is the Hillbilly gloves, made by Hillbilly, I guess. Um, you can find these on Amazon. They're great because they have that large, flat plastic area here. Uh, and the strength also comes in just how tight you get this wrist part around your wrist. So just to show you really quickly, right here, you wrap this around tight, get that on, and I can't really hyperextend my wrist back. Like these are still fantastic. I just was trying to get something more because I had fallen and ripped up my fingers a little bit. Uh, but this is great, especially if you're in a hot climate. So I recommend these highly. These are the go-to of a lot of guys in New York. Um, and then these are just Liat elbow guards. Uh, I don't know the name, I think they're probably like the, yeah, they're the, Liat 3.0 black elbow guards. Um, I should have a link for all the stuff in the description below. If it's not there, it's probably because they took it off of Amazon um, and you know, the little affiliate links help me. Uh, but you can look it up by the name. Maybe I'll just put the name of the stuff down in the description. So these are great because they just kind of slip on and off. And you can tighten this piece right here and you can get it to go over any clothing. Again, the key to this kind of stuff is you need that plastic hard surface area to hit that cement and glide. So that's really why I would wear this on the outside of your clothing, not underneath. So I don't really recommend you look into internal uh, padding. The next thing is my, uh, oh look at this sexy shot. Uh, <laughs> it's my uh, knee and shin guards. Again, made by Liat. Uh, these are like the 3.0 EXTs or something like something of that nature. Um, I fall on these a lot and it's taken the fall no problem. I've been amazed actually, really amazed at how well they do. Um, in high speed falls and low speed falls. So again, highly recommend these. These will protect your whole leg because often when we fall on these things, you're gonna fall straight forward um, nine times out of 10 and you're gonna slide your hands out and you're gonna hit with, with your uh, knee and shin and having that protection just makes you walk away and go, dang, that was worth every cent. Um, the other thing which I don't have on me and you don't really wanna see me show it off is <laughs> the only undergarment thing that I wear personally is I left it back in New York, is Kevlar shorts. Doesn't matter who you get it from, get some good Kevlar shorts on the side. The reason why I have them here on my hip is when I fall, I often twist and turn. Um, as you probably saw in that fall earlier, I kind of did a really large turn, but I end up hitting my hip a little bit and bruising that up pretty bad. So I like to put Kevlar right here. And I think it has like some on the butt as well, but um, so yeah, that's the gamut of all the gear that I wear when I'm fully geared up. But at the very least, I'm geared up with my helmet and my wrist guards. Um, and my knee and shin. That's probably the most naked I would get. All right, so after all that, I hope this has been very helpful and useful to you. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you have had a major crash yourself. Uh, maybe it wasn't 40 miles an hour like some of those crazy speed demons. Maybe it was 15, maybe it was like two miles an hour like my, my crash I did uh, in a music video. Um, let me know down below how bad was your crash? Were you geared up? Did you fare well? Um, I kind of wish we could put some images so I could see the the gory stuff, sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't if it's too bad. Um, but maybe at some point I'll create a Reddit or something where we can all... Got ourselves a seven foot maybe gator, maybe, maybe more. Can't go any further for fear of being eaten. Welcome to Florida.
But um, that's pretty crazy. Maybe I can zoom in and post here to get a good shot. Let you guys see it. You said the gators can go 30 miles an hour, right? We're about to test the kinks on. <laughs> Please decelerate. <laughs> no, I don't want to decelerate. Another reason why Gotway might be the secret safer of all the options. Oh, yeah, it's true. Despite In Motion and King Song's dedication to quote unquote safety. Gotway is the leader in the uh, gator friendly market. That's right, you can run. Up on gator. We can just shoot this right now and then we'll make our uh, power pads out of, their, out of their hide. Oh, yeah, sure. Run for your life. <laughs> Bye bye friends. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff down below. And I will see you guys on the next video. Keep riding. This might be dumb, but I'm gonna see if I can I'm gonna see if I can hit the 40 threshold while holding this. especially if you're gonna be aggressive and do high speed runs. I uh, just wanna show you just how confident I can feel while I'm wearing gear like this. My adrenaline is definitely rushing for sure, but I feel really you know, comfortable because I know even if I fall, like I'm gonna protect a lot of stuff, but however, at that high speed, there's also a possibility of a cutout from something unexpected and you know, not wearing a chest plate or anything, you could seriously injure your, your ribs. But uh, this high speed run is brought to you by me, so you don't have to try it during a crazy pandemic. <laughs>